Hello there, Morales and Axelar communities. I'm coming to you today, not only on YouTube, but also on X, as we bring you a brand new dev tutorial from Idris with Axelar. So if you joined us for the last one, we learned how to take our tokens multi-chain using the multi-chain token service. And in this lesson, we're gonna learn more based on those that same interface, but then also integrating management of liquidity. So I'm going to leave it at that while we welcome Idris to the stage. Idris, how are you doing today? Hi, Jim Jim. I'm doing great. And you too? Very, very good. I'm, I'm excited to go even further with some of these tools that we looked at before, uh, of course, incorporating the Ethereum boilerplate. Uh, and so we're going to have some graphical elements to this. And I remember you were talking before we started the stream that uh, you're going to be working hard to break this down even for non-developers. So if you're yeah. brand new, yep, watching us today, you're still going to be able to get something out of this. So stick with us and uh, and then let's take a look at this together. Idris, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. And uh, I see you're sharing your screen there. Let me pop that up for everybody. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to this stream. Um, where we'll be talking about converting tokens into multi chain assets. What do you need to do? How can you do that? And not just how can you do it, but how can you do it um, seamlessly? So you don't need to like, you know, break things. You don't need to um, be technical for you to understand how you can take your token into multi chain, into the multi chain world. Right. So let's get right into it. Um, yeah, about me, my name is Idris Olubisi. I am a software engineer and a technical writer. I currently work as a developer advocate at Interops Lab, working on Axela. And you can find me on all social media platforms at underscore Olanesoft. Yeah, Olanesoft is much on all socials. All right, so what are we doing today? So just to give you an overview of what this entire session and presentation will be all about, first, we'll Talk about you know creating new interchain tokens. Uh, so creating a new custom tokens, right? Either it's an a brand new one that we'll be creating, or we'll use an existing token. And also we we'll talk about converting those tokens into multi-chain assets. And then finally, we'll test out you know transferring those tokens on different chain. And I'll, I'm also going to show you guys how you can you know add liquidity directly to those chains that those tokens that you deploy on all the different chains, right? So um, for context, right? If you're joining us for the first time or you're hearing the word interchain token service for the first time, or this is, you just want to learn more about it. So let me give you like a quick recap on what interchain token service is. So to keep things simple, right? The interchain token service is a um, suite of tools and smart contracts that is designed to empower developers to issue and manage tokens that retain their utility and also fungibility across multiple you know, blockchain. So emphasis on retaining utility and fungibility across multiple chains. So we have different projects with you know, different goals and also specific use case where those projects exist. So if you have your token on one with on one chain with a custom functionality and you want to retain the utility and the same custom functionality across every chain, it means that interchain token service is what you're looking at, what you're looking out for, right? Because you can easily leverage interchain token service to move or connect that your existing token on one chain into 15 plus blockchains within a few clicks, and you'll be able to like deploy those tokens across all those chains. And not just deploying, but being able to transfer them from one protocol, one chain to the other. And at the same time, of course, we um, it's a good thing for you to also like have you know liquidity. And not just doing that by like, going through like stressful pr pr process. It's, all you just need to do is to click on um, a button, and you'll be able to add liquidity to that particular um, token on any 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 chain of your choice, right? So. What are some of the things you get out of the box leveraging the interchain token service? Number one is trustless, right? The interchain tokens themselves, um, they run on open source code via you know, the smart contract on a public secure blockchain by a dynamic 
uh, validator sets. This means this the entire service, the interchange token service itself, um, is powered by Axela network, which is secured by a dynamic set of you know validator. So number one is trustless. Another one is no code. Of course, we want to like build, we want to customize, we want to be able to do all of these things ourselves. But how about you going um, from one chain to multiple chain with few clicks? How easy is that? How cool is that? This is another feature that you get leveraging the interchain token service using the portal, right? Only interchain tokens fully automate, you know, permissionless multi-chain deploy and management where you can leverage the interchain portal. And the interchain portal is the interchain, you know, HTTPS slash interchain.axela.dev. This is the main net. When you go to this page, you would find inf information and steps on what you need to do if you want to create a brand new token or you already have your token on one chain and you want to deploy on another chain. And, and uh, just to give some context here real quick, sorry to interrupt, uh, Idris, but uh, yeah. last time we got to see the power of this when moving tokens from between two different chains and then also maintaining the same overall token supply between the various chains that we're using is yes. uh, one of the very powerful features. But this is going to take it a step further, it sounds like, incorporating uh, liquidity within uh, other protocols. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. That's correct. Perfect. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you so much for that, Phil. Um, additionally, you also get like this fungibility feature leveraging the interaction token service. So you can easily scale up to 15 plus blockchain as of today um, with the canonical version of your token that share a single EVM address across all of the chains, right? Don't worry, when we get to like the demo session, you see exactly what I'm talking about, how we are going to register or like create a new custom token or use an existing token address, and we'll use that to create, we'll create a canonical version of that token on every other blockchains that we'll be deploying on, right? Another one is functional, right? Interchain tokens are customizable. I mentioned this before, where you, every project have like a custom or like unique functionality that's unique to their own token, right? Or like their project. So this type of you know, customization and features, you know, it could be yield, it could be, you know, permissions, anything, basically, you can go cross-chain with all of these features with, you know, that confidence that, yes, your customization is intact across all of these chains. And that's very, very easy. Don't worry, you see what I'm talking about in a second. So now, let's take a look at the interchain token service decision tree. Why do I want to show you this decision tree? Because there are a lot of features that you could leverage in certain token service for, but at the same time, you have like questions that you want to, you know, ask, or you are not so sure what exactly you can do with interchain token service, or probably you know what you can do with it, but you want to also explore like other, you know, options that it's even faster and maybe more easier and kind of align with the goal or what you are trying to build, right? So the interchain token decision tree, let's take a look at the options are available. So first, if you want to create a new multi-chain token, right? This is the first option. If you are creating your new multi-chain token from scratch, like never exists anywhere. This is just the first time you are creating this token. And at the same time, after creating this token, you want to go, you know, cross chain. So that's the first thing. But then there's one question you need to ask yourself, like, does your token need custom features, right? That token that that brand new token that you want to create, do you is there like custom functionality attached to it that you want to you know add? Then if yes, the first option is you should build that your custom token and then make it an interchain token. But if the answer is no, probably you just you just want to use like the very basic or like the simple ERC twenty token standard, and um, that's all you want to do. Then the option available to you is to use the interchain token portal, or you do it programmatically. So when you use the interchain token portal, what you just see is like um, a, a platform that you can enter your existing token address, or like create a brand new rather, create a brand new interchain token, and you see a few details to fill in 
about the name of the token, the symbol, the initial supply, if it's going to be mintable, all of these things. And you just click and you'll be able to, you know, deploy, create your token and then deploy across different chain. And the second option is if you want to do it programmatically, you want to call these functions yourself. You want to set up a new project, a, a hard hat project locally or a foundry project locally, and you want to initiate the con this contract call yourself. You want to do it programmatically. That option is also available to you where you could call the functions directly on the interchain token service contracts. Let me pause there for a second, uh, Phil. Do we have any questions? I think everything's clear so far. So it sounds like what you're saying is that even if you don't want to deploy a multi-chain token, you can still use the interchain token protocol UI to deploy a single chain token. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Like if you want to deploy on your own, if you want to do it programmatically as a developer, you can go ahead and do it. But if you don't want to do that, of course, not everyone is a developer. You just want to like, you know, do things on the portal yourself. Then interchain token portal is where you need to go to and then you deploy your token with ease. Does that answer your question? No, that sounds very good. Let's uh, let's see it in action here. All right. So um, before we we move like to the to the devil part, one more thing that's also available to you is the first option was if you want to create that token from scratch, right? This is a brand new token that you're creating for the first time. And then the second option is you have your token already, your project already gone live maybe a year ago, you already deploy your token, and then you want to upgrade that existing ERC20 token into a multi-chain token. Let's say, for example, you have your token on um, Ethereum, for example, and then you, you're looking to um, go multi-chain and you're selecting other chains like, let's say, Base, Avalanche, Phantom, Morph, and the likes, then, there is this option available to you, which is to upgrade an existing ERC20 token. So now there's another question, like choosing this option, that you also want to confirm if your token is already deployed on multi-chain, multiple chains already, or you just have your token on one single chain. So because we have like two options to cater for you know, your use case, right? So if your answer is yes, you already have your token on, let's say, Avalanche, Ethereum, and Binance, and you want to make it and you want to link these three tokens together as an interchain token, and then actually deploy into uh, deploy to other chains, right? Then the first option we have options for you where you could deploy a token manager programmatically, and then you use that token manager. You deploy token manager on all of these chains and then you link the token manager together and you use that, you can easily just use that to link your token um, across all of these chains. But if your answer is no, probably you don't have your token on multiple chains already, you only have on a single chain. Let's say you have on base, for example, and you want to go like, um, you want to extend or like go cross chain into you know other chains like Polygon, you know, Avalanche and the likes, then, the second option is what we have for you, where you could use the canonical token, which is a simple wrapper option, that is to create a bridgeable version of your token across every you know, chain. So under this category, you can do either do it programmatically or you use the interchain token portal. So you can do it programmatically, calling those functions directly, interacting with your smart contracts, or you just use the interchain token portal. You enter your existing um, token address, and then you'll be able to register it as an interchain token. And you'll also be able to deploy it across any of your favorite you know, blockchain that you want to, you want to like deploy uh, your token on. And you can also proceed with transfer and also adding liquidity on all of these chains. Yeah, so this is the second option available to you. Perfect. So let's talk so about- it sounds like when uh, when yeah. taking those tokens, which are already deployed to multiple chains, again, there's mm -hmm. multiple options there. If you don't want to do it programmatically, or pro programmatically, you can always use the UI provided in the interchain token portal. Yes, exactly. That's correct. So now let's talk about linking. Let's really talk about like linking multiple, linking token, like deploy token on multiple chain into a multi-chain 
um, tokens, right? So I just want to show you like what function you need to call to do that because this is the first option under the category of um, upgrading existing ERC20 token, right? So what you need to do here is to call a function you should deploy uh, a token manager with these variables here, and then you could specify the sort value, um, which is going to be unique. So this sort value is very important to save somewhere when you are deploying this, because you are going to reuse it across all of these chains during this process. So you specify this unique sort value, specify the destination chain, um, either it's base, either it's you know, Avalanche, Ethereum, or whatever. And then you specify the token manager type because um, the token manager type you want to specify here could be uh, a means bond token manager type. So what does this mean, right? When you deploy a token manager, you deploy the token manager on chain A, chain B, and chain C. If you do token transfers from chain A to B, what the token manager is going to do for you is to bond the token on the existing chain, which is chain A, and then mint that amount of token on chain B. So this would help the system you know, maintain the same um, liquidity across you know, all chain, right? And also, um, you can also specify like the params here where you, you are going to encode your the address and the token address, like your, your the deployer address and the token address, and then finally the gas value. So this is the function you need to call if you want to link deploy tokens on multiple chains into multi-chain token. So the second option is doing it, you know, if you already have like on one chain, you don't have on multiple chains, you already have on one chain, then you can just use this option, which is to do it programmatically or to use the interchain token portal. So if you want to do it programmatically, you just call this function register canonical interchain token on the interchain token service contract. And you specify the token address and it's going to return a unique token ID for you, right? And then after that, that's like registering on one chain. And now you want to deploy that token remotely. What you are going to do is to call the function deploy remote canonical interchain token. And then you specify the original chain, which is like the first one that you, that you register the chain on, uh, that you register the token on. Uh, and then you, also specify the original token address, the destination chain where you want to deploy remotely to and the gas value, right? And this is going to also return a unique, you know, a token ID for you. And then finally, you can do transfers directly by calling the interchain transfer on the interchain token service contract. Now you are going to, depending on which chain you want to transfer from, remember that the two, the previous functions that we called return, you know, token ID. So depending on where you want to transfer from, you specify the token ID, you specify the destination chain, the destination address, the amount, the metadata, um, and also the gas value. And you will be able to transfer um, token from one chain to the other. So those are the options available to you if you, you know, are looking to leverage the interesting token service. So now let's go into you know, the demo. Just to reiterate again, what we are going to be doing is to create a new custom token uh, or use an existing token. And we convert these tokens into multi-chain assets and then we transfer token on different chains. And then I will show you how you can add liquidity on those chains, right? Perfect. So Phil, do you have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now let's head over to, I'm just going to like, change this and then switch my tabs. So I want to quickly show you something, right? I, I said we are going to deploy a new custom and Real token. quick, uh, Idris, before we keep going here, is it possible to zoom in just a little bit? I know some folks might be watching on a mobile device and stuff like that. Yeah, that that's perfect right there. If you're still able to work uh, at, you know, at that size. Definitely, definitely. Okay. I'm just going to like, minimize this, yeah. So I mentioned that you want to, you have like custom tokens already deployed, right? With your custom functionality. So I created a, this very simple, you know, ERC20 token here. Um, this is of course a sample code. And you just want, just to showcase like, if you have like, if you have existing token and with custom functionality, 
how can you deploy it? And then how can you use that token that you deploy um, on the portal to make it an interchange token and then to also deploy remotely to any other chains, right? This is a very simple ERC20 token. And um, it's, you know, it's like, it, it imports like a couple of, you know, implementation from the Open Zeppelin contract. And um, I'm going to rename this for this demo purpose. So first one I would like, what name do you think we can give this token, um, Phil? Oh, let's call it uh, <laughs> uh, Morales <laughs> X Axelar Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Morales X Axelar, right? Forever. There we go. Correct. So now we have this, and um, I also de declare like a, a a constant for Mintaro. This is just custom functionality, right? You could define how you want to do your your, your mint assets. I want to transfer mint assets. I want to do all of those things yourself, right? So let me let me change the name across board here, and then we can name this M A M A L, right? So and then I can rename this also, right? So now we have this. The initial token supply that we want to enter here is going to be a thousand. Oh, sorry, ten thousand. Is that okay, Phil? That sounds good to me. Yeah, perfect. Good. Uh, All right. Good number to wrap your head around. Um, in terms of you know going forward here. Yeah, ten thousand is perfect. Yeah. So now. You can see like some other things here where we grant the default, you know, admin role to specify a particular default admin. All of these things are custom functionality that you don't have to follow. You just have to implement anything like the way you want to have, the way you want to structure your token. Maybe you want to have a default admin role separate from the mental role, or you want to have both like we have in this example. All of these things you can, you know, feel free to do it the way you want it. Right, so, but then there, there are important things I want to note here. So, um, there are two main functions that is very important that you need to specify and then make public here. The first one is the mint function. This means function to allow um, users or anyone, anyone to, um, to mint token, right? So, but in this case, it's only the role with Mintaro that can mint additional tokens, right? And the same thing for burning your token. So these are the default, you know, standard mint burn where you get in the typical ERC20 token. And the cool part is that you can continue to like write stuff here, like had additional function. Maybe you want to like transfer something or you want to have all the, any of these, you know, custom functionality that is peculiar to your token. You can just go ahead and add all of them do all of this implementation, everything is fine. All we just need here is the token address after deployment, right? So I'm just going to keep this clean for the sake of, you know, this presentation. And then I, I'm going to like deploy this token right away. All right, so uh, let's go to the compiler. I, I have just changed this. Yeah, I didn't change the name anyway. So, but then I've compiled this and then I can go ahead to deploy my token. You can see the contract we specify here, Morales X, you know, um, Axela forever. And because of this demo, I will just set my address as the default admin and then the minta, right? And I'm going to deploy on Phantom network. Right? This is Phantom, right? So let me deploy here and we should get a pop-up. Yeah, a MetaMask pop-up. And we confirm this transaction and let's wait for it to, you know, finalize. Once the transaction is successful, we'd see the transaction here. Yes, so this is it, right? So it's, this is our token. We have like custom functionality that we can, we have like all of these, you know, uh, methods available for, for you. Um, the approve, bond, whatever that you need, allowance and all of this. And these are like typical things you get when you import like, you know, packages um, from OpenZemplin and you have like some other features 
on your token. So we are not going to do anything here. What we just need here is this address here that I'm going to copy. So I've copied this address. This is our token address. We can also verify that. Let's, let me bring this up a little bit so that we can verify, check the transaction hash here. And then I'm going to navigate to FTM scan. Yep, 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 FTM scan. One second to verify everything is happening on chain. And you can see it shows success here, right? And it's showing deployed one minute ago, right? And then we have all of this other information that you might want to know. So if we click on this token page, we'll see that we have like maximum total supply of what, 10,000. And um, you can see one holder, one transfers, and you can see other details here, right? So now we have our token address. Now let's make this token an interchain, a multi-chain token, right? On and we'll deploy it on other chain. So if you go to interchain.axela.dev, interchain.axela.dev would redirect you to the mainnet. But for the testnet, because of this test purpose, uh, just you just need to enter testnet.axela.dev, right? And you are going to land here. So by default, you should see it this way, where it's going to ask you to connect your wallet, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click this and MetaMask, I'll connect my wallet, connect my wallet. Now I've connected my wallet because I'm not deploying a new interchain token. What I'm doing here is I have an existing custom token and now I want to make it a multi-chain you know, token. So what I'm just going to do is to paste in the address here. Let me see. Oh, sorry, that's the transaction ask. That's not the address. Let me copy the address here again. Ha and happens to back. the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so now I have this, and the system is automatically, once you paste in the, the custom the, the address, the system is automatically going to like redirect to the token page where you can see information about the token. You can see it's Morales X Axela Forever. And then we have the symbol MAF, SMR18, and the token address here. Right. So the first thing you see here is to register an interchain token. Right. So when we click on this, you're going to see this portal. And the cool. Let, let me just yeah. say right here, uh, Idris, this right here, in terms of graphical functionality for taking a token multi chain, is beyond anything that anybody else is developing right now. And if you're at all interested in multi chain development, this alone should sell you on this solution, especially if you're a beginning developer and you want the power of the UI to help you along. Um, sorry to interrupt again, but th this is very exciting to yeah. see all these choices and such a seamless uh, <clears throat> method of getting this set up. Yes, in the beginning of this like presentation, I said, we are going to do everything with ease. So you guys already confirmed I'm not lying. <laughs> That's actually true. So. It's as simple as you know, few clicks, and then you'll be able to take your chain, your your token from one chain to the other. So all of these processes, we've you know, think through the entire process. What are some of the feedback we've gotten? What are ways to better improve the current system? That's why we've built this amazing platform for anybody, anywhere to build, register, deploy, and transfer tokens across any chains. So right now we've registered on Phantom. Yeah, we're registering on Phantom, right? But you have the option to select even additional chains, right? That you want to deploy on. But in case of you know this tutorial, I'll just go ahead and register only on Phantom for, for to start with. And then later on, we select additional chains that we want to deploy on. So now it's currently deploying, and you can see how fast it is, right? Then now token deployed successfully. If you want to support, like, want to tell the world about it, you can just click this, you know, button. It's going to share a post um, based on the token you deploy and with a very fine-tuned message to tell the world about your newly deployed token. And then you can also verify this on FTM scan on chain, right? You can see 26 seconds ago. So let's go back to the portal. You click on view token page. So in this view token page, you see additional information after registering your your token, right? So now you can see we have the name, the symbol, the decimal and token address. We've seen this before. Um, but additional information like the token manager, which is a, a contract also deployed for you to help you manage 
the token as you move them across different chain. And then we have the token ID, which is a unique ID peculiar, you know, specific to your, to your token. And there are three additional links here that we also use, you know, to support our builders is number one is token ownership claim request. So for example, after deploying your token, you want to like claim the ownership of that particular token. So you want to supply your details, the details of your projects, the name and all of those things. And you also want it to reflect on chain. So you can click on this link that takes you to a form where you can fill and then we'll be happy to help you with you know, this process. So, um, and also if you want to add your token on Squid, right? If you're hearing Squid for the first time, Squid, this is what Squid looks like. It's a platform you know, that allows you to swap and it's powered by Axela. So after creating your token and you want it to be available on Squid so that you can you know, share with anyone to go swap and then you know, move things around, you all you just need to do is to click on this link and send a PR, you'll be able to like, uh, you'll be able to uh, list your token on Squid. And uh, the final one here is if you want to coordinate any marketing with us, we're happy to, you know, to help with that. We just need to click on this link too and fill in the uh, required details and you should be good to go. So now we can see if we scroll down, we see that we have the registered change session and then we have the unregistered change session, right? So the first one here, we register on Phantom and you can see it's showing balance what 10K, the token manager address and the token address. So these are additional chains that we might want to register on. So I'm going to select Celo and um, let me see if, um, let me select Base. Which one do you think we should select, um, Phil? Oh, let's um, let's select Optimism as well. We just uh, did some steps yeah. on Optimism for our Morales Money Pro community. So. Anybody nice. watching the Morales Money Pro, a special shout out to you guys. <laughs> yeah. So let's just pick these three for now for demo purpose. You can as well select everything, right? And the system is going to deploy in all of the chains. So I'll click register on additional chains. And I'm supposed to see a Betamax pop up so that I can confirm this transaction and then we'll be able to proceed from there. So while we, this is, okay, let me see this. Let me see. Let me refresh this page. I was gonna say, sometimes you oh. need to do a page refresh for MetaMask to connect up like it's supposed to. Uh, we'll blame yeah. MetaMask for that one. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so let me just select Celo and Tumizim. All right, so it says register on two chain. Oh yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, so now, Click register and then you can see it's saying, you know, interchain token deployment started and then it's trying to load up the transaction status. So you can track everything here. Now it has been initialized. If I over on optimism, I can click to open optimism, I can click to open silo, right? So now I'm, I can verify that is happening on chain because I'm directed to the Axela scan, you know, explorer. And I can see that the function call. The, the event here is interchain token deployment, as you can see here. And also we can see the symbol of our token. We can see it's going from Phantom through Axela to Optimism, right? And you can see like, you can track the status as it moves from you know, the Phantom network to Optimism. Currently it's approving. And then one, once it's done approving, it's going to execute. So now, that's it for, for optimism. This is going on right now. And then the other one for Celo. So why we just need to wait like a few more minutes and we should be good to go. But then if we go back to the application, we can also track the status here. We don't have to like go to, you know, actual scan to see. If you scroll down, you see pending chains, right? And then you can see the status here. It's already at confirmed stage right now. After confirmed, then it's going to, Know, execute then once uh, once execution is complete these two chains is going to move under the registered chains so let's just wait it says executing nice uh, so visual confirmation there of the process in the ui i like that yeah yeah so so you can just easily track things without you know having to go anywhere to any any other places to like confirm so now um this is also executing 
So you can see this shows executed already, but if I click one more time, it's going to bring me back here and you will see like the entire process of execution, including like the amount, the amount used, charge, you can verify everything on chain, right? So let me refresh one more time. All right, so now we have registered chain, we have Phantom, Celo, and Optimism. So we have just successfully deployed on Celo and Optimism with few clicks, right? Now let's do transfer. This is like really crucial because now I have balance of 10K on Phantom and I want to like transfer to other chains that I'm currently deployed on. And, and just so to I explain just... for anybody who's confused at all, even though we've deployed these tokens to these two other chains, we haven't actually moved any assets over there yet. Both of the balances are zero. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, okay, just just As wanted to see, get that yeah. clarification for anybody who is watching along, maybe seeing this for the first time. Yeah, yeah. So you can, as you can see here, it shows no balance, so it's zero. Um, then what we are going to just do, so we we'll click on transfer. You see this, you know, pop up. You can select where you want to transfer to. So I'm going to select Optimism because this chain it's only available on these two chains. You can see that we only have like two options here. And then the amount to transfer. So I'm going to transfer 5,000, which is half of the total, you know, supply um, to Optimism Sepolia. And then I'm going to click approve. Um, and then MetaMax pops up. I am going to next and then, you know, approve that transaction. So, yeah. You can also share like this process. You can share and tell the world about what you just did with the the, the transfer, you know, from one chain to the other. So it shows like loading transaction status. So this is going to load, and we are going to see like the end-to-end -end process, how things, you know, is being initialized, um, confirmed on the network, and also executed. So let's just give it, you know, a few few minutes. We should be able to you know, see all of these things and then also see the transaction executed successfully. So initialized, um, just wait, should be done in no time. Yeah, now we can see it's confirmed. And then after confirmation, we are going to see, you know, the execution process. So you can also view on Arcular Scan to verify if you don't want to like just, you know, be staring at that box. <laughs> and if you want to see as things move here, you can verify it here. You can see we transfer what, um, 5,000 MEF, and then we call this method interchain transfer and it's transferring from Phantom via Arcular to Optimism. So it's currently approving. Let's just give it like a few more seconds to approve. After approval, it's going to execute. So approved successfully. You can see that here. And um, the last step is execution. So if you go back to this page, you see that it's confirmed already and it's going to like execute. So let me just come back here and then leave it here for a while. Let's see. Yes, executed successfully, right? So you can see I, I just came back here and then I found my balance to be 5K. So now we have 5,000 on optimism. So let's go back to, I want to quickly show you something. So if we go to our token page here and then we refresh, we should see that the total supply is still what? 10,000, but then we now have like two transfers, which is seeing it as the same thing, right? Across the two chains. So if we go back to um, the portal, you see that we have um, the Phantom, sorry. We have Phantom here. We have Celo and then we have Optimism. So on Phantom, we have 5K. On Celo, we have 5K. Uh, I'm sorry, on Optimism, we have 5K. So you can also verify this. You can see um, we have the token address here. 
which is the same address here and then the same address here. So the first one is cello, and then the second one is optimism, which carries like the same EVM address. So the more you deploy all of these tokens remotely, they carry the same address across all of these chains, right? So if you have like some sort of configuration to track the same token address, um, it's already you know implemented here, and then you can have the same EVM address across all chains. So we can also switch to optimism, Sepulia. OP Sepulia, and then we can do transfers. Maybe we want to do transfer back to Phantom or Celo, right? So, but since we have done this, we are not going to like do transfers back, right? So, does this process, you know, <laughs> make sense, um, Phil? Do we yes, all get absolutely. like where and we are right It now? sounds like from, you know, I'm just kind of trying to put two and two together here. So if I set up my token like this and I deploy it to a couple other chains and then I also connect it to Squid, and are my users then going to, obviously holders of the token, going to be able to perform those cross-chain functions through Squid themselves? Yeah, of course, they are going to do swaps. So they have functionality to do like swaps and do all of those things directly on Squid. So Squid is powered by Axela. So be sure everything is, is fine and safe. <laughs> perfect perfect yeah that's no, yeah. very exciting and uh you know this is like i was saying before guys um if you're seeing this for the first time and you're you've been wondering about cross-chain tokens or maybe taking your token cross-chain there is no other solution out there that's going to give you this level of tools um you know a lot of the other options out there are going to be entirely command line or uh, they're going to have a much clunkier graphical interface. And this is, I think, the best of both worlds. So I just want to reiterate that for anybody who's maybe shopping around for a cross-chain protocol. Look no further. There's a reason why Morales works with Axelar, and it's because of functionality like this. Exactly. Um, yeah, so now we have, like, we have our balance, we have our token, we have everything all set, at least on three chains. And let's go... I want to show you how you can add liquidity, which is like really cool. So, but because this is testnet, of course, we want to, if you want to do that, you can do that on mainnet. So let me show you one example of a token on mainnet already that you can see the option to add liquidity. So Daki, Daki token, let me refresh this page once again. It's currently on base, right? And is registered, um, is registered on base. And Arbitrum, Scroll, Optimism, Blast, Mantle, and Linear, right? You can see the options that are available here, which is missing on the testnet, is to add liquidity. And you can see for every chain, you can click on the options available for you to add liquidity, like on Uniswap, SushiSwap, you know, Truster, Fusion X, and Pancake Swap, right? So if I'm the owner of this token right now, or I have like a portion of this token and I want to add the liquidity, it's as easy as just clicking on this and then it's going to take me directly to the portal where I can add liquidity. Oh, beautiful. So I can just specify and then, you know, add values, you know, do all of these things, connect my wallet and shoot. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I'll be able to add like liquidity directly to those tokens on any chain. So that's for base. So let me, this is currently deployed on Optimism too, which is great, right? So I can click directly here and you see the same thing here. And um, you can see the chain here on the URL is Optimism, right? And we can you know, specify what we want to add and be able to select all of this information. And that's all you need to do. To add liquidity. Very, very cool. Oh, very cool. Chips. Now, again, for anybody who's seeing this kind of thing for the first time, when you're providing liquidity for an asset, you're providing that along with another asset that it's traded against. So you saw we had Ethereum selected in that UI there, but really it could be anything. It could even be another token that you deployed so long as there's sufficient uh, interest between the two to make it make sense. And uh, of course, you could add multiple liquidity pathways using multiple assets and things like that. All these things are possible in the blockchain world we live in today, but never before has it been this easy. And uh, I love seeing that, you know, quickly getting into the different major pools in each of these chains is awesome. 
Yes, like really, really awesome, right? So all of this, the entire process of, you know, I have my token on chain A, I want to go chain B, I want to bridge your know, token, I want to add liquidity, all of these things have been put in place. And uh, we kind of create a one-stop solution that can allow you to do all of these things across any chain. So you don't need to worry, uh, maybe I don't have access to this chain or what are some of the infrastructure I need to set up for me to be able to you know, deploy my assets or my token on this chain and all of these things. So all of these things have already been, you know, think through and then put into, into place, implemented, and make sure we have like the best experience um, for anyone looking to either create a new token or they already have existing token and they want to go multi-chain. So that's like, let's let's go back to our Mo, our Morali Axela token here. So the only difference you, you might just notice here is the hard liquidity option, which is of course on the mainnet. And then every other thing remains the same. I can go ahead and even you know keep selecting other chains, select additional chains, and then register them. Once I register it, I can confirm. I can confirm everything on chain. Right. So now let's go back to you know the presentation. I think we can. Uh, if there are any questions, then I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, do we have any questions? Just taking a look at the chat, I don't see a whole lot there. And uh, so, guys, let me just quickly recap what we've gone through so far. So, we took at creating, or we took a look at creating a token using the interchain service provided by Axelar. We looked at taking a cho token multi chain, and we also took a look at providing liquidity to various AMMs across the chains that we've deployed to. And all of that is possible through the same UI which uh, is very exciting to see. It makes the process of doing a multi-chain token as simple as interacting with blockchain using your wallet, basically. I mean, it's it's now at that same user-friendly level. Uh, you can be anybody in the blockchain community, any type of user, and still be able to interact with this fairly easily. Um, we do have a request in the chat for a copy of the slides. I don't know if these slides in particular are going to be made available publicly, but is there a place, uh, Idris, where they can go if they want to see more information on these three steps or uh, a good documentation spot to point them towards? Definitely. So if you go to docs.axela.dev, um, let me, this is now, what am I, this is now? Um, not sure why this is not loading for me right now, but then docs.axela.dev. Um, so Phil, can you can try this on your mind? Yeah, please. Okay, all good, guys. I'm going to share my screen here so we can see this. Uh, looks like we're having some slight workstation issues, but just to reassure you that the documentation is in fact live and easily accessible, here we are. Now, uh, Idris, if you want to redirect me to uh, one yeah, of these links. So click on, click on developer. Yeah, click on the developer card on the main screen. Developer card. Yes. yes. And then click on cross chain token transfer on the menu on the sidebar. Cross chain yes. token transfer. There we are. And we'll just then click on introduction. introduction. Yeah. So, but then where we are going to is interchain token, right? Oh, because that's where, yeah, then you can click introduction. So, right. So, this is the starting point. If you scroll down, you see like we have like three cards. The first one saying you can create your interchain token. The second one saying programmatically create the interchain token. And then the third one is make an existing ERC20 token into an interchain token. And then the final one on that card is check out the interchain token portal, which we just used right now. So it's as simple as just going to our documentation, you know, read through what we want to do. You can directly access the interchain token portal. Or if you want to learn more about what we are doing under the hood, what are some of the processes we've already put in place? How are we even doing these things on the contract side of things? Please just feel free to, you know, our documentation is the best place. So <laughs> irrespective of any slide, anything else, like we've invested like a lot of time and effort into making sure that we have all of the information that you need on our documentation and also um, well-documented for you to you know, go through. 
Beautiful, beautiful. I see we got some great comments in the chat. Uh, thank you for the love from our community devs there. I see Bill in the chat, uh, one of our community Morales users, as well as a few other folks. So welcome, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the, or enjoying the content and uh, definitely check out those docs for additional information on using the things that we just went through today. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll be available for you guys at any time. Now, uh, Idris, uh, did you have anything else for our viewers today before we wrap up today's stream? Yes, I have one more thing, which is supports. Like I want to talk about my supports. Uh, please can you like, Bring me up again on like my yes, screen. Yes, absolutely. Let's go ahead and uh, pop your screen back up here. Do we have it now? Yes, uh, we, we can see what you can see. Perfect. So, um, yeah, what next, right? We have did this tool. If you joined our, the previous, you know, um, live stream with Morales about building like creating a new multi-chain token leveraging the internet the ethereum boiler plates and then you know doing things programmatically from the ui standpoint we understand all of these things right and we also understand that you could have like questions clarification or in fact feedback so we've created this dedicated repository for support and then you can please go ahead create issue we get notifications like almost instantly when you create an issue. We'll be happy to able to like support you, answer your, all your questions, and um, please do not hes hesitate to you know ask any question, any question, clarification, feedback for us, and we'll be happy to answer them all. And then finally, thank you all for joining once again. Um, this is a, a, a QR code here um, that I would encourage like if you if you want to scan. Let me know what you think about this session. It takes less than one minute to fill in this you know, survey. Let me know what you think. How do you find this beneficial? And what are some of the things you've you know, learned? And then I'll be happy to get all of those feedback. And then, yeah, that's it. Phil. Perfect, perfect. And if you're looking for support from the Morales team, check out the links below. There's a lot of resources down there for you guys as well. You developers out there, us and Axelar are here to help you in your development. And that's why we bring these tools to the table for you guys. So uh, looking, uh, looking forward to working with you guys and wishing you all best of luck in your development projects going forward during this exciting year of 2024. Now, that said, I want to thank everybody in the audience. I want to thank Idris for joining us today and Axelar for working with us on this. In addition to that, I just want to leave you guys with... Uh, with one final statement, um, with everything that's going on in the world right now, there's nothing more exciting to be working on than blockchain. And uh, I want to make you feel comfortable and welcome in this environment. And that's what this is all about. So join us, build something with us, because with great partners like Axelar, Morales is leading the way. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.